Right folks, welcome back to the MCM Outdoor Show and um, I thought I'd make a video, like I say I've got masses of outdoor gear in the loft which I've um, put together over many many years and um, I thought I'd talk about some of my camping stoves so I've um, I've split it up into categories, we've obviously got gas stoves here then I'm going to go over some of the methylated spirit stoves, some twig stoves and then some um, uh, white gas type Coleman type stoves, but yeah, I've got many types of um, camping stoves which I've had for a long, long time. Now, if you don't like camping stoves, you're going to want to switch off to this video because, unless they interest you, um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about them a lot, so uh, switch off and don't watch it. But uh, if you've got an interest in camping stoves like me, well, obviously, stay tuned. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go in age order really, starting with this which uh, some of you may or may not have seen on some of the other videos. It's a Camping Gaz is the uh, manufacturer and the name of the stove is a Deluxe Super Bluette and it comes in this uh, metal tin which also doubles up as a windshield and uh, you know it's, a, it's an old fashioned uh, screw on uh, gas cartridge stove and it uses the uh, gas cylinders whereby once you've pierced it You've got to keep the burner assembly screwed into the gas cartridge. Um, you can't take them off um, once they've been pierced. That is it. And uh, I've used it on quite a few videos and I'll put some links up there. But I love it. It's, I think I've mentioned a couple of times, it's one of the first camping stoves that I recall um, seeing when I was a young lad. Um, I think my dad purchased this type of stove, which uh, sits on here. And um, it also doubles up as a windshield. I won't get it out the bag, but it's very simple. Uh, it's got a single burner, um, a screw knob um, for uh, controlling the gas. And uh, these sides here also double up as a windshield. And it obviously comes in that handy carrying tin. It's good. I've not used it on any sort of wild camping trips because, let's face it, you're not going to be walking up a mountain with that uh, metallic box, but it's nice for car camping and just making things in the back garden. And that was a really nice example, which I picked up on eBay. So moving on, um, the next stove, well, it's this one, it's, a, it's an MSR reactor and uh, there's much newer models out now. I'll just show it up there. Hopefully that's focusing on uh, the stove and not me. But um, this is really, really rapid and it must be about 15 years old, this. You get this one, I think it's a one litre pot. Um, or it's the, This is the one and a half litre version, so it's a one and a half litre pot. Um, I'm going to zoom in and have a look at these in a bit more detail after I've spoken about them. But well, yeah, one and a half litre pot, uh, you get this lid, a nice rubber handle on. Uh, there's a vent and hole just to let the steam escape when you've got the lid on. But it's a rapid, rapid boiler. You get this one um, burner head, which is called a radiant ring burner. And um, at the base of the pot, just there, it's got these fins which concentrate the heat on the base of the cooking pot. And it's a cook kind of just fits into each other, just like that, just nestles in there. Um, it doesn't attach on uh, like some other pots, for example, the jet boil, which I'll show you in a minute but it sits fairly securely in there and uh, the rate at which this boils water is unbelievably quick. If you're just wanting water boiling or you want to heat up some, you know, boiling the bag camper meals, um, that's absolutely spot on. It's quite weighty, um, I'll put all the specs below the video description, but it's a really good stove if you want rapid boiling of water. It performs well in the wind as well because there's no gap is there between the, the burner head and the base of the pot so the wind doesn't get at it and like I say with those sort of fins on the base of the pot 
it concentrates the heat in um, a small area so it heats it up really quickly and that's great quite bulky quite heavy and not everyone's cup of tea if you're a gram counter or you want a small pack size but I take this on wild camps and uh, it performs very well indeed that's the MSR reactor I believe the newer model now is the MSR wind burner but anyway moving on this is an uh, an original pocket rocket by MSR and I'm just hoping the focus isn't latching onto my face but comes in this sturdy triangular carrying case which is made out of heavy duty plastic and it is just a very simple single burner um, which attaches screws on and self seals onto the screw on type gas cartridges um, it's got a little bit of a windshield just in the top there uh, you can see that sort of tri formation um, which sort of means if one side blows out hopefully the other side doesn't and then it will reignite the other side that's kind of the theory behind that um, windshield in practice you're going to need another windshield very lightweight again specs below this video um, quite wide pot supports there you can use that with a wide variety you know pans or cups but the the heat on this um, is quite intense and it's very loud stove those of you that have ever owned an original one um, it sounds like a, a you know an afterburner on an f-16 or something like that it's very very loud it's very very powerful packs down into this small thing and that is great if you look at the room compared to you know the reactor there you can just see how much smaller that is and that packs down to you know next to nothing moving on we've got a jet boil this is a jet boil flash and um, lots of people have heard of these there's all different types mini mo's um, but it's just an all-in-one cooking solution and again it's great for boiling water uh, not I don't personally like to, to heat food up directly in these type of stoves because the heat source is very concentrated at the base of the, the pot and you get sort of scalding if you're not very very careful you've got this rubber lid with a drinking spout and there's a uh, vents there just to allow steam to escape and if you turn it over what it comes with you get a, a pot support which uh, obviously goes onto the base of your gas canister and it just makes it that much more stable prevents it from tipping over you've got a plastic cover just on the base which doubles as a cup to drink out of if you so wish and then if you see in the base of that one again there's those fins which concentrate the heat kind of radiator effect into the base of the pot and it makes it that much more efficient um, contrary to the um, MSR it's got some locating pins stamped around the perimeter of the burner head on this and they locate just in there and twist so that this one you can tip it upside down and it's that much more stable once your gas is screwed on there you know it's it's a more solid stable cooking system than the MSR you need to give it a twist just to get it off again and you've got this sort of thermal cosy on the side with a grab handle just to drink out of that's good for like heating soup up in again and you can get boiling the bag meals in this one but it's a good stove part of our collection and I use it a lot um, you can also fit all in one the, uh, the pan, pan support, a small gas cartridge, you burn a head and it's you know in this small compact all-in-one solution it's clearly not as small as like yeah, your MSR pocket rocket but uh, nevertheless it's great and it's not going to take up too much room in your pack that's the jet boil flash moving on another stove by MSR um, I don't think this is made anymore this is a micro rocket comes in this self-contained plastic plastic bit of a tub nice and strong if you look at that next to the pocket rocket it's even smaller than that so there you go I think they've got the pocket rocket 2 out now um, and they don't make this one anymore but inside here we have a piezo igniter and we've got the stove itself which is even smaller you know it's an updated design where the pan supports fold out fold out into that configuration when you're ready to use it we've shaved off some weight from the uh, pocket rocket 
and uh, it's a really really small self-contained solution I like this again it's a uh, it's quite noisy uh, it's not a stealthy stove to use but it's very very powerful and uh, it's also efficient and um, the flame control is quite precise on this one it's a little bit more precise than the original pocket rocket so I I like that and um, yeah it's another good stove really lightweight very very small um, packs down to you know it doesn't take up any room in your bag and it's nice it's really good quality and I've used this one a lot it's a nice touch as well to get the piezo igniter the final stove in the MCM outdoor show gas collection is this one and um, this is one of the most recent ones I've got it's a it's a Vulcan stove by OEX and I know a couple of people use this stove uh, Dragon Outdoors he's got one of these but um, the reason behind I got this is that the burner head which has these fold out three feet and uh, the the cook you know the cooking support just fold out the reason I got this one is that it sits on the floor it's not sat screwed onto a gas cartridge and when you're cooking in your vestibule in your tent um, the further away the flame is from the the fly sheet fabric the better um, you know I'm not recommending cooking inside your tent but let's face it we know that loads of people do and you've just got to be really careful so what I wanted to do is have a solution whereby uh, there was a stable base which it is on the free legs there but it's much lower down you've got this hose so you can have your gas cartridge you know away from your burner and in short instead of the flame being up there maybe where it's sat atop a gas cartridge it's that much lower down and it just gives a bit more peace of mind um, you know when using it you're not going to knock it over it's not like you've got a pot a gas cartridge your stove a pot on top of there it's a more stable solution if it's closer to the ground it's more stable and uh, it's good the flame control is really precise on it uh, it's got a preheating tube whereby uh, the gas sort of vaporizes in here over the burner and it's heated up and um, it in theory gives better performance in colder conditions i've used it in some quite cold conditions and uh, i can confirm that it works you get the same performance out of it um, when it's cold as that you do in you know warmer conditions so that sums up the um, the gas stoves in my collection. Now a lot of people might say, why have you got so many camping stoves? Do you actually need all them? And the short and honest answer is, no, 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 I don't. I don't need them at all. Uh, you know, maybe need a couple for different types of scenarios, but like everything, uh, when you get into a hobby that you enjoy and you've been doing it for so long, you end up picking more and more bits of equipment up. And uh, yeah, just kind of amass different stoves. Uh, I'm just going to get a quick drink and we will move on to the methylated spirit stoves in the collection. These are the methylated spirit stoves in my collection and um, beauty about meths is it's very cheap, um, it's readily available and the stoves uh, invariably have little or no moving parts and by virtue of that fact they are very low maintenance and they're cheap to run and um, they're reliable there's not much to break on them so they're pretty good um, for those reasons some of the downsides to meth stoves are you know longer boil times they're not as uh, fast or efficient as some of their gas or white gas, gasoline, etc. counterparts. Um, you know, they're to be enjoyed at a much slower pace of life. So if you're chilling out on a wild camp and you're in no rush, um, well, then they're absolutely fine. Advisable to use a windshield with them, um, unless there's one built in, such as the tranges, which I'm going to mention in a minute. But yeah, they're good. Uh, they just take a little bit longer to use. Uh, I would never advocate using uh, a methylated or a spirit stove in the inside of a tent, uh, mainly because the flame is very, very hard to see. And uh, if you get a spillage, it can be lit without you knowing and the next minute your tent starts disintegrating and uh, it can be a dangerous or a life-threatening situation. But we're all adults, so just use common sense at the end of the day. 
Anyway, I'm going to start with uh, these little penny stoves, which I made myself. Um, there's loads of videos on the internet to tell you how to make it, but I just used um, a 330ml beer can, spliced them together, cut them, I put some uh, felt wadding inside, and uh, as you can see in the top, there's some holes there that I've pierced into it, and um, the name penny stove, because once it's lit, the, uh, the holes in the very top of the can just there, you cover it with a penny, and uh, it just aids uh, sort of the blooming, and yeah, you get your, your ring of flames uh, around the outside. Nice and light, This these weigh next to nothing, because obviously the cans are made out of aluminium, so it's very lightweight. But uh, the good, um, you know, you can imagine that in a pack, next to nothing, and they are quite sturdy because, you know, they're not very thick, and, um, you know, they're surprisingly strong uh, when you look at the form factor. So they're good. I made two of those just for making quick hot chocolates or quick drinks when out and about. In terms of pot supports, we just make your own. A lot of people just use three ten pegs just around the uh, circumference of the burner uh, to support your pot, cup, pan or whatever. Um, got a spare Trangia burner. Uh, it's a very old one this and I've never used it. I just picked it up from Military Mart. Uh, again, you can use them like the penny stoves. It's just a rubber seal jumping out there, but um, yeah, you can you know you can just take one of them with you, fill it up with methylated spirits. It's got a rubber seal just in the um, the lid there, uh, which makes sure that you know the meth doesn't leak out all over your bag. They're nice, a little bit heavier because it's obviously made out of brass, and uh, I'll clean that one up one day. Another one. Uh, this is called a Bruler, B-R-U-L-E-R, -E which is by Alpkit. Uh, it's nice and light. You've got this um, this housing, um, this little rubber feet, three rubber feet on the bottom, which fold out. You've got one, two, three pan supports, and then you've got, they all look similar, these. It's just a spirit burner in the top. The slight difference to this one is um, you get uh, this cap here which has got a bit of a cover which you can use to sort of regulate the flame control. My experience with that is it's not an exact science, it's quite hit and miss. Clearly you've nowhere near got the flame control which you have on a gas burner. Um, but it just helps it, instead of being full blast you can just close it over and if you just want things to simmer. It's quite hard to get a simmer on them but you know in theory that's how they work. You can use that also to snuff out the flame. But uh, yeah, burner just sits in there when it's lit and uh, your pot pan or whatever you want to heat up just sits on top. Um, I have actually used this on a wild camp a couple of times. I actually find this is quite hard to extinguish. Um, yeah, I don't know why on this particular stove. A couple of times I've just tried to extinguish it by dropping on this cap. It's actually still got mess in there and uh, it hasn't extinguished properly which is you know, my advice when using a methylated spirit stove, use them outside, obviously, and uh, just make sure they are a good distance away from your tent, and just be mindful of the fact that when they're lit, you can't really see uh, the flame, it's not really visible. But it's quite good, uh, it does a reasonably okay job of shielding the wind, but well, that is the Alkit Bruler, very reasonable. Um, a famous Trangia stove, um, anyone who knows about these knows that they're great. They've been around for donkey's years and they come in various different sizes and materials. Some of them are, uh, you know, got non-stick coatings on um, and uh, the various different sizes. But it's a, it's a spirit burner, which basically, I'll get it apart because this is going to be an, an anal video for, for stove lovers. So you get a frying pan, a handle, which you can use on your cookware. We also get a kettle, this particular one is the Transjet 27 UL, which obviously stands for ultralight. And we've got pots, a windshield, and what happens with this stove is, the burner is just tucked away inside the kettle. So if we get it out, and you'll quickly realize that, you know, they all look the same, these Transjet burners. The burner just sits inside here, and then our windshield, and um, there's a couple of little sections which lock into each other and then twist. You lift it up, 
But you can imagine that does a great job. That that the burner there, the flame, is completely protected from the wind. And then the frying pan, well, it can sit down there, get your frying, cook your eggs and sausages on that, or whatever you're doing. Uh, conversely, these three pot pot supports, you can just drop down into the body there, and the pans just fit on there. Absolutely great. There's no moving parts as such to break. It is pretty light. It's aluminium, and uh, you know. It's not the quickest stove, but the great, the reliable, and some people swear by them. I really like it, and it's great in those situations. You know, it's it's nice for car camping, um, you know, where you know you don't need your food cooking as quickly as you know maybe if you've got a gas stove or you don't want your brew in a couple of minutes. You know, you're looking at a lot longer boil times. But when you've just got a nice relaxed camp. You know, some people prefer the simplicity of methylated spirit, but they're nice, really good. So that's a Trangia 27 Ultralight. I've also been sent a non-stick frying pan by uh, Mountain Mike, which I'm very appreciative of. So let's make some space. Let's make some space. We're getting a bit cluttered here. Um, what are we going to look at next? Is this one, this contraption, and. Uh, this is from Military Mart, shout out Military Mart, Dave and the team there, some great products. But anyway, moving on, we've got this one, it's a, it's a Swedish Army Trangia. It's not light, um, it's very heavy, but I will show you the component parts, let's just get that out of the way. You've basically got a windshield and uh, various other components. Let's get it out. So. We've got this, which is the top, or it doubles as a frying pan. Matt quite often cooks up sausages in this, and it does actually work a treat. Um, there's these two sort of rings, which just flip up, and you can put a twig, a bit of branch, whatever, just to extend that out. Well, that's really good. You also get a fuel bottle, your burner. I've just got a bit of a fire steel in there as well. And then this is the main cooking vessel, which I believe is aluminium. Some people don't like that. This is your windshield, and in the base of that, there are these two feet which just sit up and you light the stove, ignite the burner. Little tip for that uh, just dip a twig in into the mess, light the twig, and then put the lit twig into the burner, that's a good tip for, for getting them lit. But once that's lit, put it in there, light it, windshield goes over the top, and depending on what you're doing, you just want to fry something up, just sits on top above the burner, there's this little feet in there which raise it up, or you know, beans, uh, you're reheating like a stew or a casserole, that just sits on there, which is really good. If you're using it over an open fire, you can also just use that hanging hook, you know, make fashion a bit of a tripod, so you can cook that over an open fire. Or you can um, get a twig fire in there, use wood and uh, cook up, or use wood, whatever, for a fuel. So it's quite versatile, that, and um, it's, you know, it's old Swedish army stuff. I think this one was unissued. I think they're quite reasonable, but they're really good absolutely bomb proof and very sturdily made so they're the methylated spirit stoves and just to recap um, good simple no moving parts as such to to break or go wrong within the actual burners itself they all pretty much use the same type of burner methylated spirits cheap as chips and widely available downsides in my view are you're not going to be one of using these inside your tent and you know, you've got to have a little bit more time on your hands if you're using meths to cook. They are more susceptible to wind, uh, however, with the exception of the tranges and you know the windshields, which I've talked about as well. So that leaves, um, I'm going to say twig stoves to last. We're going to look at some Coleman uh, white gas stoves next. <laughs> Right, we're nearly there. If you're still with me, you're doing well. And um, yeah, it's excellent stamina, sticking with the video. 
These two stoves um, I've had for a long time. They are made by Coleman and um, yeah, they are the Feather 442. And this is the Sporter. Stand by, just get it out of the plastic case. Here we go, it's in mint condition. Look after all my stuff. A dual fuel 533. Let's get this one out as well. Um, I've had them for a long, long time and they're cheap to run. They are efficient and powerful. Although you wouldn't want to use these on a wild camping trip. You can see that the feather is uh, a little bit smaller and it's bigger brother. You just look at it there. Now, they basically consist of a big reservoir where you put your fuel. There's a little fill cap there on both of the stoves. Um, you can use Coleman fuel, which is a little bit more expensive. Um, I think they run on white gas and on leaded fuel as well, on leaded petrol. So um, the beauty of this is that there's always, no matter where you are in the world in theory, you're always going to be able to get fuel for these stoves. Uh, if you look over the top of the burner assembly, it's the same on both. Basically what you do is, once you've filled it up with fuel, you've got their own pumps. Just unscrew that, pump it up. Don't want all the gas to escape there. But um, yeah, you pump it up and pressurise that vessel. And then you've got your little needle valve uh, that operates the stove and causes fuel to just go through this bar on the top basically which uh, as it heats up the fuel eventually starts to vaporise and the stove starts to run properly. Um, they can flare up a bit when you first light them again so mindful of that. I wouldn't use these particular stoves inside a tent unless I had a massive um, porch or an awning. Um, they are very powerful and they do work well in cold weather. Um, you can get preheating paste which you can put on this uh, on the preheating tube and you can light that and just let that heat up for a couple of minutes first but they're really good they're good for car camping uh, they're very efficient and like i say they run they can run on on leather petrol you can get you know spare parts are quite readily available as well this is a lot it's a bit heavier a bit more bulky but again it's a really good stove and this one is in absolutely perfect mint condition i've hardly used that and i must be about 20 years old but I do like them, they work well in the cold, and that's one of the beauties. I particularly like going, um, we go camping all, all year round, those of you that follow the channel will know. Um, so in snow or really cold uh, weather in the middle of winter, if anyone's ever tried to use a gas stove, you know when you wake up first thing in the morning, performance is quite poor, um, and you're like just left initially bewildered when you don't understand the physics of what's going on as to why the performance is so bad. Um, Conversely, these type of stoves work well in cold weather. Uh, like I say, you might need to, to, to preheat it first. It's not strictly necessary because it might just take a bit longer to, to start running efficiently. But these work very well in cold weather, just, just by the nature of how they work. I personally, I just use Coleman fuel. It's not that expensive and you can buy, you know, a couple of litres in there. From, I get them from Go Outdoors. I find that's the, the most reasonable place to purchase it from but I like them they've got their own character they're not too loud to use and they're nice and stable as you can see the feather one here it has uh, these three fold out feet they're still available and um, you know they're not they're not cheap but they're not they're not too expensive either um, and yeah there's, there's not you know I've not had them fail and I've not seen many reports of things going wrong and the spare parts quite readily available so I like these as well, um, like I say, you, you wouldn't particularly take these wild camping, but for campsite camping, it's absolutely fine. Solidly made, runs on a variety of different fuels, clean burning, and uh, very efficient, works well in cold weather. Moving on, uh, the final stoves that we're going to look at are some twig and wood stoves. Right, we're going to look at these wood stoves finally. Just on a side note, I've just had a message off me mate, the Craggle, um, another cracking YouTuber, and um, check him out. He just told me that people are panicked by intense. Um, what is going on? I did kind of foresee that with the uh, holiday situation, COVID-19. Apparently, uh, you know, staycations are going to be the way to go uh, for this year, maybe next, who knows. 
But uh, yeah, tents are in short supply, but luckily I'm okay, which is good. Anyway, twig stoves, um, yeah. You're gonna be using these in sort of different types of situations, I find. Uh, for bushcraft type camps, hammock camps in woodland, that's where I primarily use these. Somehow, I mean, although I do, it doesn't feel quite right using a gas stove when you're camping in like a forest or a woodland type setting. Let me know in the comments below if you feel the same. But we've got a couple of different types of stove here. I just use this one first because this is out. I've never used this. Um, so I can't really tell you how good it is or it isn't, but I will tell you what it is. It's a, it's a Swedish army volcano stove, which is purchased from Military Mart. And it works as follows. Got a couple of different components which come in this one unit and um, there's this little bit of a I don't know, um, bar which just keeps it all together and just loosen that. It's made out of aluminium and some people don't like that because they believe it's unsafe. Um, well, I'm still alive and I've been drinking out of aluminium for a while. Ask me that in 20 years, we'll test that theory. You've got your lightweight aluminium cup with these two arms so when it's hot, because this will heat up, um, you can use your arms and uh, yeah, your hands even and uh, pick up the cup without burning yourself. Which leaves us with, we have a flask with a cork stopper, I like that, just old school, bit of a cork in there. And we've got this, the body of the stove itself, which as you can see, it's got a hole stamped out at the top and near the base, obviously to assist with airflow. And it's got a little notch in the back where this locating pin sits okay so what you do is light a fire using wood twigs whatever you need to in the base of here and then you can heat up your cup sits in there and you've obviously got your your air holes just to just to let the chimney effect do its thing you can also obviously take the cork out first heat up water Boil some water in that flask. I've never used it. It wasn't cheap. I think it was about eight quid from Military Mart. Uh, correction. It's not. It's not Swedish. It's Swiss. And I didn't. I did mean that. Swiss Army volcano stove. What's prompted me is the uh, the Swiss cross in the base of it there. But that's good. In theory, like I say, I've never used it. And um, yeah, I need to try that one out. I just like the look of it, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to buy it. And it all fits together with the bar on the top. Lightweight, it is bulky though, and not maybe what you want to be taking while camping. But bushcraft type camps, got a load of stuff with you, bang it in. I personally love the smell when you've got, uh, you know, of wood smoke drifting across camp. You can't beat that. And on that note, we've got this particular ones by Fox Outdoors. Um, a wood gas stove. Um, I'm not going to get it out, I don't need to show you, I think most of you watching this have all seen a wood gas stove. There's a picture of it on the side, it comes in its own bag, and um, yeah, wood gasifiers, um, name as it says on the tin, uh, it burns wood, uh, a lot of people use um, cat pellets, um, obviously the wooden type made out of fibre, uh, basically fill it up with those and it burns from the top downwards. I struggle with this personally, um, you know, it comes in a couple of different parts, you can use gel fuel with it, you can use hexi, hexi blocks in the gel fuel as like an additional saucer instead of using the wood in it. Um, you've got fold out pan supports on there, it is in some of the hammock camping videos from time to time, but uh, I've never got on particularly well with this, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, but I've seen other videos where people get on with them and they last for quite a long time if you put a, you know, a, a generous helping of sort of wood in there or wood pellets, you know, it lasts for a long time um, and the way it burns and um, the wood gasifies um, and those gases ignite and come up the sides there. But yeah, that was, that was 20 quid, that one from Military Mart. I like it because I like the idea of it, but I need to get better at using that one. And uh, coming onto this, which is uh, a hexi stove. It's, uh, it's covered in black, so I'm not going to get it out, but 
Normally when I go, well, when a dog walks with my little ones, uh, we've been to Fairy Glen and various bits of woodland, you know, it's an, you know, it's an army surplus, hexamine tablet stove, really lightweight, uh, it's reasonably compact, although there are some sharp edges on there, there's black stuff going everywhere, so I'm going to put it back in the air, uh, put it back in the back, plastic bag. But yeah, Hexi tablets, you know, it's 10 a penny, isn't it? They're really cheap. Uh, it can be hard to light in the wet, as I have found out to my detriment, um, trying to use it in the middle of a rainstorm. But um, really cheap. And uh, if you've got a BCB type um, Crusader mug, um, there's a kidney shaped cutout in the top of it, and the BCB mug will fit in there perfectly. And it's great for just heating up water, just for a brew, um, using Hexi blocks or equivalents. And last, by no means least, is a Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox XL. Um, this is the latest stove that I bought, primarily bought it to make hot chocolates for with my little ones. Um, but I've used it, you know, for all different things. Really easy to set up. It just folds out. I mean, most people watching this video, I assume, have heard, heard of Bushboxes. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a nice large size. You've got the trivets which go in the top and you've also got this cooking plate which you can use cooking sausages, all sorts of things. You can cook burgers on there. It's really nice. It's quite heavy, although they do make it in a titanium version. And um, I like this, to be honest. Um, it's easy to, to light a fire in it. It's easy to maintain a fire in it because of the size and the increased chimney effect because it's, it, it's a larger um, body of the stove. It's quite versatile as well, like I say, you get these two trivets which you can put across the top um, to support a wide variety of pots and pans. You can also place the trivets through the side or it can also take tent pegs as well, just to hold various different things. You can use it with um, a methylated spirit burner, the little brass burners I was showing you. They will sit between um, these two trivets and be supported as well, so it's versatile. You can use it with all different types of fuels. Um, one thing you've got to watch out with this particular type of stove is uh, it's not really meant for just sitting there for having a campfire in. Um, you know, it's it's stamped out of um, I think it's stainless steel this version, but it will warp because it's metal. And there's a couple of complaints online. Oh, it's warped. Well, I mean that's just the laws of physics and thermodynamics. You've got sheet metal. If it heats up enough. It's eventually going to warp. That is just part of the physical properties of the material it's made out of. Um, Bushcraft Essentials have done some various how-to how videos. But in short, you want to have a small fire. Uh, and you only want to have enough fuel in as you require to boil your water. So because it's so efficient, you don't need a lot of fuel to, you know, to, to, to boil um, you know, water in your vessels, your cups, your pots, your pans. It's not meant for roaring fires. Keep a small self-contained fire in the middle of it and I've had no problems with it warping. Just use it according to the manufacturer's instructions. Um, but that's it. I, um, I've gone on a lot there to be fair. And uh, yeah, it's difficult isn't it? Content at the moment because of the COVID-19 situation. Um, I think everyone's just trying their best and um, just working with what we've got. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the stoves there. Um, I've overlaid some sort of more detailed views as I've been talking just to break up the monotony of my voice but thank you very much for watching I appreciate it if you've stayed till the end uh, if you've got any value out of this video it would mean a lot if you just give it a thumbs up it doesn't cost a penny just move your finger over the thumbs up button and press that and it really helps me out on YouTube and I would appreciate that um, if you're new to MCM Outdoor Show please do consider subscribing just let you know that there's over 200 videos now in the back catalogue and hopefully there's something, a bit of enjoyment there for everyone. I'm also on Twitter, at MCM Outdoor Show. And there's a feed on Instagram. And if you're a Facebook user, we've got a group with a load of friendly and like-minded people in there. Big, massive knowledge base. And it's really friendly. Um, and it's just a load of people talking all about the great outdoors. So if that's your kind of thing, why not head out over to Facebook and join us on there. Because you're all more than welcome. Um, finally, I'd just like to say, if there's any particular stove that you have seen in this video, because we've whizzed over them, it's not a review video, um, I've just been talking about what I've got, but if you've seen anything in particular, and you would like me to talk about it in some more detail, and uh, put a proper review out there, 
Well, let me know in the comments below. Let's have some interaction. Tell me about some of your favorite camping stoves, what they mean to you, why you like using them, and uh, what kind of situations you prefer to use your stoves in. So that'd be great. Go and enjoy the great outdoors, fingers crossed. Um, uh, restrictions are slowly being relaxed and we'll soon be back up wild camping and um, enjoying the great outdoors. Thank you very much for watching and take care.